in this good Sunday, we have a special ensemble singing this morning. We have a special ensemble. And listen, we're going to sing a song that I brought back from the 1980s. Uh, Douglas Miller took the hymn, Past the God and Gentle, oh, Gentle Savior, and made it into a gospel song. And some of you may remember that MC Hammer came and made it even more popular because he added a rap to it. We're not going to do the rap this morning. But some of you might remember that Mr. MC Hammer came and uh, took this song and took it second. Thank you. 
Today we will be laboring from Matthew chapter 20, that last section starting at verse 29. Our Lord's gospel is recorded in Matthew chapter 20 and verse 29. Matthew 20. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thy son of David. And the multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thy son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you. They said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight. And they followed him. For a few moments, I want to talk from the subject, Miracle Moments. A Miracle Moment. A Miracle Moment. Life's opportunities sometimes come only once. You have to grab the moment hmm. when it presents itself. Hmm. Yeah, some opportunities don't repeat themselves. <laughs> they come only once. Yeah. And if you miss it, hmm. you miss it. Amen. There are some privileges, some blessings. Some opportunities that will happen only one time in your life. Yeah. And you have to seize that moment. If you don't seize it, you will miss it. Mm -hmm. Question, uh, are you ready for your miracle? to a humdrum posture who feel as though miracle is something that's not applicable to them. They can see God working a miracle in somebody else's life, but not in their own. I want to submit today that God has a miracle for everybody here today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The question is, are you ready for your miracle? <laughs> I'm afraid today. It doesn't really matter about your attitude on it. Uh, you can be lackadaisical if you want and let yours pass by. It won't help you to talk to your neighbor because your neighbor's miracle has nothing to do with your miracle. <laughs> The question is, are you ready for your miracle? Your miracle is not determined by how people feel about you. Your miracle has to do with you and your relationship with God. I want to ask you again, are you ready for your miracle? This passage it won't take me long. I know y'all want to go see the Bob Cobb was do today, but, but, but the question, that's 
Shut up. Be quiet. Be quiet. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they opined that they heard that Jesus was passing by. And they knew who Jesus was. So they decided we better take advantage of this opportunity. I don't know. If they heard about those other two blind men that had been healed by Jesus, I don't know if they heard about one of his previous miracles, but the word of God, not how you know their names, because first of all, they address him properly. They said, oh Lord, son of David, yeah. have mercy on us. I wish I had a witness here that, that, that these blind men are exercising some degree of faith. That, that Jesus don't pass here every day. Passing, he's got a crowd with him, but, but we are going to seize the moment because we're going to seize this opportunity. The opportunity has nothing to do with the crowd. There's a crowd. You know, sometimes we get excited about a crowd, but you should ever allow the crowd to hinder you from getting to Jesus. I, I feel sorry for folks who can't say amen because the crowd is too big. I feel sorry for folks who can't praise him because. They don't want folk to see him. I feel sorry for folk who don't want to give him credit because you embarrassed that somebody may be looking at you. But you want to be possessed with the opportunity to get close to the master. Oh, if I can just touch him, I know I'll be there. Oh, I'm possessed with the idea of getting a hold on Jesus. I like to see friends. I like to hear the choir. I like to see uh, uh, this, that, and the other, but I don't come just for that. My reason for coming is I want to feel the Holy Spirit moving on the inside of me. I want the Holy Ghost to show me Jesus. My question, my question, my question is, uh, were they really following Jesus? Well, they're really following Jesus. Uh, they claim to be following Jesus, but seem like there's a conflict between the crowd and the couple. There's a conflict between the crowd and the beggars. Seem like they have two different agendas. And the two different agendas got them on different sides. You gotta be careful taking Holes every time you decide to do what you do. Hmm. I've said to you before, you might work in the world, but when you are a child of God, you can get in trouble following the crowd. Yeah, 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 yeah. I dare say 90% of the time, the crowd is going to mess you up. <laughs> the Bible declared, broad is the way that leads to destruction, yeah, right. but narrow is the way that leads to yeah. life. Don't let the crowd drive you away from Jesus. Are they really following the crowd? That brings me to the next point. I'm trying to let y'all go really. Uh, shouting out uh, over the scoffers. Shouting over the scoffers. Uh, uh, the Bible said this. Shout it out. Oh Lord. Son of David. Have mercy on us. The crowd uh, thinks that Christ is too dignified to take up time with beggars. They feel like the crowd uh, feels as though Jesus is a this this prestigious leader, this dynamic teacher. He's a sympathetic man, but he really don't have time to deal with beggars right now. They, they feel like uh, beggars have their place and it's all right for you, but you're interrupting a serious session now. And you're interrupting the master. The master, it really, it really doesn't have time for you right now. You catch it at a more convenient time. Uh, it appears to me they have a different view of Jesus. They are following their Jesus. But the Jesus they visualize is not the real Jesus. The, visual, the, the, the Jesus they 
visualizes this dignified uh, leader, this man who is powerful, but he really doesn't have time for peasants. He doesn't have time for commoners. He doesn't have time for folk on the sideline. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to hear it today, but I'm afraid that's, that's what's wrong with a lot of folk today. Uh, uh, you're following Jesus, but you're following the wrong Jesus. Yeah, you're following your Jesus. You, you're following a Jesus that you ascribe your characteristics to. But the way you view Jesus has nothing to do with Jesus. I was sharing with a preacher, he was having a problem with Biden of saying he's not going to forgive him. Uh, he's not going to forgive him. He's going to wipe him off the face of everything. He's saying, how can you call yourself a Christian and say some stuff like that? I said, well, first of all, y'all need to understand that Jesus is not this meek little humble person y'all always try to make. <laughs> Jesus doesn't go around just letting folks step on him. Jesus doesn't go around. See, see you can't be who God called you to be. Unless you are willing to attack that which you need. You can't, you can't try to be politically correct and still attack the forces of Satan like God wants you to attack the forces of Satan. I wish I had a witness here. You, know, you, you got to recognize who God is. You got to recognize He's not all polarized one way. He, Deals with the good, the bad, come on here, somebody, and the ugly. Look at that, look at that. Listen to this homosexual, and he was justifying his condition, and he was saying that uh, you church people need to get it straight. God, God it messed up. This God y'all trying to describe is not the way God is. That God is not a God that would send folk to hell. God, God is too good. God would make us one way and then punish us for the way He made us. Oh, you're just tight, but it's right. I'm going to preach today. I'm going to say amen. And I'm saying, you know, here is everybody chiming in, you know. Uh, y'all should be ashamed talking about there's only one way to God. Uh, you know, there. that. There are a lot of ways to God. There's no just one way. That y'all need to, you Christians, need to get off of your high hearts and recognize that God is a God of love. And God loves everybody. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. You, you, got, a, you got a description of him, but, but you got the wrong description. This, this Jesus fellow. Oh, he's all right. He's all right. He, he's a good fellow, but uh, he's not what y'all claim he is. He's a good man. He's a good prophet. And he taught some good lessons. Uh, but he's not who you claim he is. He, he's not the son of God. He's not God. Uh, you know, they got a description of Jesus, the description they want to ascribe to him. I can preach a sermon on just that. But let me just say while I'm just walking through here real quick to help you folk, uh, let me just say that, uh, number one, uh, God is a God of love. And God loves people too much to send them to hell. That before we go to hell. And if you go to hell, God didn't send you that. Come on, get somebody. If you go to hell, it's because you rejected God. And you rejected God's son. Do I have a witness here? Man? And that you got to recognize that, that uh, God's love doesn't mean he can put up with just every and anything. I wish I would. <laughs> God, the Bible says God chastises those he loves. Come on here, somebody. My mama loved me and she showed me often how much she loved me. Come on here, somebody. And she didn't do it by allowing me to do any and everything I wanted to do. That sometimes she loved me by putting some blessed assurance on my blessed assurance. She, she knew how to chastise us, but more than chastise us, you can whoop us. 
they would beat us. I told you, the tough they did to me, Brother Jackson, they could lock them up right now for some of that stuff. But you know what? I thank God for those whippings. I thank God for those beatings. And they had to be in the Had to be in the house. They had to be in the house. I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be in jail somewhere trying to get over on somebody. But they used to say, we're going to whip you because we don't want some policeman beating on your head. We're going to whip you. In here because we don't expect the food out there. We want more chastising here so you'll learn how to behave when you leave here. When you leave here, you represent us. Do I have a witness here? Yeah, you can try to make Jesus who you want to make Jesus, but it doesn't matter who you say he is. Jesus is who he say he is. Do I have a witness here? Jesus will always uh, show you his identity. Bible said that they were howling, Jesus, have mercy on us. And the crowd said, shut up. Uh, you don't have time for you. Shut up. Uh, you don't have time to deal with you. Shut up. You're interrupting the movement. Do I have a witness? But the Bible said, the more they said, shut up, the more they screamed. Oh, Lord. Our son of David, have mercy on us. I wish I had a witness here. If nobody else knows your situation, you ought to know your situation. Don't wait for somebody else to beg Jesus for you. Don't wait for somebody else to pray for your miracle. You better learn how to ask God for what you want yourself. You, you gotta ask how to beg of yourself. You gotta ask God, let me get the sons of teaching. Lord, have mercy on me. I have a witness here. You might know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, I'm talking about when you dare to trust Jesus, when you dare to believe the person of Jesus, when you dare to believe that he is a miracle worker, when you dare to believe that he is the Messiah, that he is the Son of God, he is the Savior of the world, you better be ready to holler at him as soon as he passed by. Sing that song that they cast me not, oh gentle Savior. Hear my come on, get somebody. I'm gonna cry. Why, oh lovers, thou art calling? Don't pass me by. It's all right to look at somebody else, shall I? I don't want you to pass me by. It's all right to see somebody else feel it. Don't pass me by. It's all right to see the preacher on the fire, but I want some fire in my soul.
You got a crowd saying, shut up. You got two men howling. How could Jesus hear two men over a crowd saying, shut up? You got two men howling, have mercy. You got a whole crowd saying, he ain't got time for you. But the Bible said, Jesus stood still. Lead us 
into victory. Oh Lord, thy son of David, have mercy on me. Yeah, they saw who he was. And because they saw who he was, they screamed out to him. And the Bible said he stood still. Yeah, but the text didn't stop there. You see, their faith is what got his attention. But the Bible said after he stood still, he called them. Oh, heavenly Holy Ghost. Yeah, the crowd can ignore you when you're on the wayside. But the crowd can't ignore you once Jesus has called you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think everybody ought to know that you've been called by the Master. Yeah, yeah. You see, y'all think preachers are called. And we are called. But you know, God calls every child of God. You can't be a Christian unless God calls you. God don't call crowds, he calls individuals. In other words, when God calls you, he's going to call you by your name. He ain't going to say, come y'all. He ain't going to say, come crowd. But he's going to call your name. And when he calls your name, you better be ready to answer the call. Do I have a witness here? Do you remember hearing uh, your call? Don't come to me and say, Brother Preacher, can you tell me when I got called? Uh, your calling is something nobody else can give you. Your calling is something no one else can notify you about. Uh, your calling is something uh, you got to know for yourself. Uh, I know.
Thank you.